What's going on everybody? Welcome to Command and Console. My name is Jason. Today we are looking at my favourite first person shooters ever, pretty much. Like most of these top 10 videos, I can do a part two quite easily. I'm sure there's going to be loads of games that I've forgotten about over the years. But as it stands, I've created a list mostly from my collection. A lot of these, there are some games that are not in my collection yet or don't have physical copies because they came out on PC in the 90s. So I've got them on Steam, for example. But anyway, let's, without further ado, let's get on to my favorite first person shooters. So my first honorable mention goes to Blood, the 1997 just first person shooter uh, made by Monolith Productions. Uh, really great uh, FPS. It's got one of my favorite shotguns in any first person shooter of all time. You go against these cult-like enemies and they've got an amazing scream when they die. The sound effects are awesome. You feel powerful. Like I said, the shotgun in this game might be one of the best shotguns ever. It sounds awesome. It feels awesome to shoot. Uh, the visual and audio feedback is great. Yeah, I love this game. It's so much fun. It's that classic 90s, you know, they, they call them boomer shooters now, but it's that classic 90s style where the, the levels are like more like maze-like and yeah, you've got to find your keys to get through doors and stuff. It's classic Doom-esque gameplay, uh, but Blood is one of the best of its kind, in my opinion. I absolutely love it. Next, honorable mention, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I bring this up solely because... Um, it took over my life when it came out in 2009. It absolutely took over my life. I played this, this the campaign through, throughout completely. I played loads of the special ops missions, tried to beat every one of those. And obviously, we can't talk about Call of Duty without talking about the multiplayer. I think, aside from maybe Call of Duty Black Ops and Black Ops 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 had, has had, the, for me anyway, the most memorable multiplayer suite in a Call of Duty game. It took what Modern Warfare did and it just expanded upon everything it did, uh, be it the kill streaks, be it the leveling up system, the progression, going prestige to make you carry on and build up your character even more. I have so many great memories of Modern Warfare 2. Uh, my next honorable mention is the original Doom from 1993. Uh, this game is a example of the granddaddy of first person shooters. Uh, it's a game that I can just stick on vanilla and play it and have a blast. You know, have a quick couple of levels and just kill demons and have an awesome time. The wonderful thing about Doom 1993 is that it's been iterated on and modded and had this, you know, 30 years, 40 years of, of a modding community on PC that has made amazing, amazing mods for it that has made the lifespan of this game infinite. The original Doom is almost an infinite game now because you can you get it on PC for nothing, for pennies, and then you can just get loads of mods for it and have new experiences for it. Uh, but as the vanilla game stands, it's a timeless first-person shooter. You can jump on it and play at any moment and still have fun with it. The game is a technical marvel for what they were able to do at the time. And yeah, it's so, so good. I love the original Doom. I will always love it. And the mods you can get on it now make it an infinite um, an infinite game of possibilities. Uh, one highlight is Brutal Doom. That mod is unbelievably good. And yeah, uh, it's just so good. That's Doom. So that brings us to my actual um, top 10 list. This one's taken a while to create. Uh, it's been like, do I like this one more than this one? Stuff like that. But anyway, Without further ado, Medal of Honor Frontlines. So yes, uh, this game is fantastic. It has aged really well as well, surprisingly. This game is still as fun to play as it was back in 2002. This is the golden age of Medal of Honor. Um, I do miss this franchise, especially when it pertains to the uh, World War II aspect of those games. I remember the first game being pretty fun on the PS1, kind of one of the original kind of first person shooters for the PS1. Then you've got Underground, which is a sequel to that, which is pretty much the same thing. 
and then we got this on PS2. I know there's a bunch of games on PC that came out, like European Assault and stuff like that. This one is the creme de la creme for me, middle of one of the front lines. Um, the opening level where you're storming Normandy is one of, if, if, if I want to go out on a limb, is one of the greatest cinematic moments in video games. Intense, beautiful, awesome, and it still holds up today. Um, yeah, definitely inspired by Saving Private Ryan, but also inspired by the true, true horrific events of that time. Uh, yeah, I love this game. I love the shooting. I love the environments. I just think the, the, the aspect of World War II is a fascinating time as well. Um, it's, it's a terrible time, obviously, but it's a fascinating time to read up on history on it. And this game kind of gives you enough there to give you almost like a history lesson as well. Uh, I absolutely adore it. It's fantastic. Uh, one of the best games of this generation as well. The GameCube version is probably the best version of it, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that's Medal of Honor Frontlines. Soldier of Fortune, uh, one of the first... Uh, you know, uh, first person shooters to really like push the envelope and make it as violent as all hell. Obviously, Doom and Blood had their kind of, you know, uh, controversies where it being kind of violent and, and dark and brutal. When they brought things into the third dimension, Soldier of Fortune was the big bad when it concerns like, ah, uh, protect the children, super violent video game. I mean, the game comes with a warning and an age rating, so this game is brutal fun. The shooting is satisfying. The shotgun is probably the most powerful shotgun in any video game ever. Um, not the best shotgun in video games, but it feels like a cannon in this game. This shotgun right here, the, um, I don't know what shotgun it is, but yeah, that shotgun on the front cover, it feels like a cannon in this game. It's so brutal. Um, the, the violence is over the top and campy. Um, and the, the guns feel really great to shoot. Uh, you're this like, um, you're this mercenary who is tasked to basically go and go, you know, declare war on terrorism, and you're like their their go-to guy to get shit done. And uh, yeah, you just go, you just go different levels, just shooting and just basically brutalizing these terrorists in this game. Uh, absolutely brutal, fun, awesome stuff. This PS2 port is pretty good. Pretty good PS2 port. Uh, obviously, I, I I'd rather. Play on PC as you see, like, like I said with Doom, it's modded, been modded to hell, and it looks great. Um, but I'm holding this up because I do like the PC port, but um, I, I have a physical version of the PS2 version, so I want to hold it up. That is a Soldier of Fortune, awesome fun game, great shooting. The shotgun's like a cannon, and it is really, really violent. There is a sequel to this, which isn't as good, but uh, I still recommend the sequel as well, it's pretty decent. Uh, that's Soldier of Fortune. Next up is one of the last first person shooters to come out on the PS2 and uh, they really pushed this game to its limits in my opinion and I think it might be one of the best looking games on the PlayStation uh, in my opinion that is black um, you've probably heard people talk about this game for quite a long, uh, quite a lot it is one of those kind of like uh, overlooked underrated titles that people need to go and check out if you've not it's, it's such a great game uh, it looks amazing um, it's pretty much gun porn, the video game, essentially. Uh, it's all about, you know, showing you really, uh, really eccentric uh, reload animations. I love reload animations, me. So I'm all about just satisfying reload animations for this game. Uh, the guns look great. They sound huge in this game. And this is basically like a bombastic, over-the-top, just ridiculous Michael Bay action film. Everything explodes in this game. Everything explodes, um, just, you know, shrapnel, particles go everywhere. It's actually a marvel this actually runs on the P on the PS2 as well as it does. Um, it's just, it looks great as well. Like the actual quality of the game in terms of graphic is, is actually surprising for a PS2 game. Um, but the, the, the gameplay is just bombastic, over the top, just explosive fun. Um, it's not violent in any regard, like when you shoot people, they don't bleed or anything. It doesn't need the violence to be there. It's got bombastic explosions and ridiculous set pieces that are just satisfying to play through. And yeah, and like I said, the reload animations are just satisfying. I can put on a video of all the reload animations from Black and be just chilled out. It's just satisfying. Go and play Black. It's fantastic. Uh, I do want to get the Xbox original Xbox version as well uh, for this because it's backwards compatible on the Series X. But I've got the PS2 version for now. That's Black. Speaking about overlooked first-person shooters that no one's actually played, 
Cold Winter. This is a James Bond-esque spy, you know, secret agent game with actual teeth. Uh, this game is awesome. Imagine like uh, one of the James Bond games, first person shooters, but it's brutally violent and it's just, it's got better gunplay in my opinion. You're a M M MI6 agent, it's pretty much James Bond. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, you, uh, you go around and do missions and uh, some missions you've got to just plant cameras around the area to get like a, a foothold on what's going on, the meeting that's happening. And then you can decide whether to you want to go and, you know, uh, you've got to disrupt the meeting, but you can go in guns blazing, you can do other things. It's quite, um, it's quite decent in the way it kind of lets you tackle certain objectives. Uh, but it's all about the gunplay. The gunplay is satisfying. The enemies, when they get hit with the guns, blood splats everywhere. Ragdoll physics abound. It's so fun to kill shit in this game. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's so underrated, man. Cold Winter is so, so underrated. Overlooked. No one talks about it. Even the back, it does, <laughs> it does allure to this kind of like it's basically James Bond without the license. No tuxedo, no license, no mercy. I highly recommend it if you want over the top, ridiculously violent gunplay that has really satisfying audio visual feedback. This is one of those really, really cool games. And it's got cool, diver you know, diverse objectives that are not necessarily about shooting stuff, but it's all about that secret agent stuff, which I always appreciate with these kind of games. But yeah, one of my favorite FPSs of all time and one of the most overlooked PS2 games ever. That's Cold Winter. Next up is an absolute bona fide classic. Um, and I adore this one. Again, what I'm about to hold up is a port of this game. The PC version is, of, of course, superior. I'm talking about Half-Life. One of the greatest games of all time. Uh, it changed the first-person shooters forever as well. Uh, more focused on the narrative aspects that we didn't really get with FPS uh, in the 90s. Obviously, we came off of stuff like Doom, Duke Nukem, and Quake, more you know, emergent, immediate, fast-paced shooting. Half-Life takes that, slows it down and adds a really cool story to it. This PS2 uh, port is pretty much a pretty good port. Uh, it's a marvel that it runs on PS2, to be honest. Obviously, when I talk about it being my favorite FPS of all, one of my favorite FPSs of all time, the PC version is the superior version. It's the version to play, right? I'm holding this up because it's something I can hold up and it's the game. Uh, but the PS2 port, it shouldn't be, shouldn't, be, uh, shouldn't be ignored. It's actually pretty decent, all things considered. Uh, Half-Life is so good. Gordon Freeman, one of the most iconic video game characters of all time, I would, I would say, of all time. You see that, um, you see the hazard suit and you see his, him with his glasses on, his little goatee. Iconic, you just know who it is, right? This game is unbelievably good. One of the greatest FPSs of all time. That's Half-Life. Next up is an open world FPS uh, that is a sequel to an original game and this one is probably the best in the series. I'm talking about Far Cry 2. Uh, yes, what can I say about this game? Um, it's unbelievably immersive, incredibly so. Um, your The shooting is fantastic, the game looks awesome. They go down the realism route, not many games tend to go down, especially when it's a you know full on uh, AAA title like this by Ubisoft. What Far Cry 2 does for me, it really makes you, it's almost a open world immersive sim in the first person shooter genre. Uh, it really makes you be a part of the world. Unbelievably great atmosphere in this. And it's all about, you're hunting down this arms dealer, but there's there's these two factions in Africa that are at war. So you're pretty much this little dude in the middle of this like this continent-wide war. Gunplay is awesome in this game. It really does go down that realism route, like I said, where like you're usually procuring weapons from falling enemies, and usually they're like old and rusty, and they they jam. The healing factor is really interesting as well. Like uh, you can like bandage yourself up, and you see like animations as you like cutting the bullet out of your arms and stuff. This game goes fucking full hog with the with the sim element. The mechanic that a lot of people don't like, and I don't like it, I could do without it, your character gets malaria. So now you've got to go around uh, and find antidotes for this, or you, it, it will kill you. And I remember doing tons of this game, playing loads of it, loving it. Oh, I must say though, the fire in this game, no game has fire quite like it. It's unreal, um, the, the fire effects in this. You start a little blaze near some grass, 
a whole bloody forest fire is up up in flames. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. The the fire in this is like one of the best aspects of me. Just going around with a flamethrower, just burning everything. It's so cool. Uh, I remember playing this game, putting loads of hours into it, and I get to a certain story point. I look at the map. So you've got the map is huge at the beginning anyway. Oh, uh, by the way, Jason, that's only half the map. Then it unlocks the south part of the map, so it's like you've only been playing on half the map. It's massive. This game is absolutely huge, and uh, I love it. It's so good, man. Like, I highly recommend tracking up a copy of Far Cry 2. It is backwards compatible with the free uh, with the uh, Xbox series as well, so you can just pop it in your new Xbox and play it. Oh, it's so good, man. It's so, so good. Uh, there's a buddy system as well, so you can hire other mercenaries to work with you, and they're pretty good. The AI are pretty decent. They'll come and they, they revive you when you're downed, and they will, you know, proper give you cover shooting and stuff yeah lo loads of aspects i love in this game it's it's so good as far cry 2 next up we have another sequel a game that's you know a series that i i i sorely miss this series uh, i love this series of games there was three games in this series they're all fantastic but i think this one is the creme de la creme time splitters 2 this game is made by free radical uh, it includes some developers that came away from Rare and who helped make Goldeneye and who helped make like Perfect Dark. So it's got that kind of like pedigree in there. And you feel it in the gameplay. You, you, you have that vibe. It's like the next game from those guys, you know? Like it feels like it's the, you know, you've got Goldeneye, you've got Perfect Dark. Here's our next game, Time Splitters. Uh, it, it definitely has that pedigree in there. You can feel it in the mechanics and the gameplay, the shooting does feel like it's from that breed, you know, that golden eye kind of uh, breed of, uh, of first person shooters. But Time Splitters 2 for me is a perfect sequel. The story mode is fantastic, so much fun. The shooting is as satisfying as ever. If you've played Go Golden Knight or Perfect Dark, you're gonna be right at home with this game. The shooting is so much, sat so satisfying and so just bombastic and awesome. Uh, yeah, the characters are all eccentric and over the top and flamboyant. So fun, man, this game. And when you get onto multiplayer, it's even more crazier, right? This game had one of the most fun deathmatch modes ever. You can run around as a monkey with a machine gun. It holds up now. It's so, so good. That's Time Splitters 2. We're down to the final three, guys. And my number three goes to Fear. When you're uh, looking at games that are have got amazing gunplay, an amazing action one of the best looking for a game that has unbelievably scary horror that actually is really really scary and adds an amazing atmosphere to the whole proceedings this one a game where the enemy ai is never being atopped in any game ever fear is everything that you want in a action horror it's like it was a horror film directed by john woo it's crazy good yeah, in this you can slow you can you can slow down time and just obliterate enemies. And the cool thing about the enemies, though, like I said about the AI, is that they adapt to your playing style. So if you're really aggressive and you run at them and shoot, they will back off and they will find a way to they will find cover. But if you're like hiding, they will seek you out. They will flank you and they will try and like basically push you out of hiding. Incredible AI for the time. And I don't think it's been topped at all in the modern in the modern era. Uh, yeah, this game is un un unrivaled action, really, in a first-person shooter. Absolutely bombastic. Every gun just sounds huge in this. The shotgun, the special shotgun, is unbelievably devastating up close. You can pretty much just, like, just evaporate enemies with the shotgun. It's that powerful. Uh, this game is one of the best ever, not just first-person shooters for me. It's one of my favourite games of all time. But yeah, as it comes to the first person shooters, this is one of the best of all time. Uh, that's fear. Bioshock. Yeah, um, I absolutely adore this game. I play it maybe uh, once or twice every year. It still holds up. It's still incredible. Uh, and yeah, I can't express how much I love it. Um, I love the plasmid mechanic, the whole idea of like a the one-two punch where you shoot, you use your plasmid, then you use your wrench to kill people. The guns are all satisfying to use. The big daddy on the front cover here is one of the most scary but awesome 
uh, characters in any video game for me. Um, yeah, this game is absolutely fantastic. The World of Rapture is one of my favourite game worlds of all time, even though it is the most depressing and the most grim place to ever exist, I suppose. Um, yeah, this game is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Those opening moments where the plane crashes and you come out of the water. When I first saw that for the first time when I got this game, that was next gen to me. It was unreal. I was like, wow, the water looked unbelievable. And the, the effects, of course, and the light was great. And when you go and you get to the lighthouse, you've got to go down on the water. It looked awesome. The reveal of Rapture was awesome. But yeah, the story in this is told through kind of like uh, audio logs. And it's really, really cool to listen to all of them because you get a whole well built through audio logs. And it's really interesting to hear these people talk about what's going on and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's so, so good. Bioshock is one of the best of all time. And as a first person shooter, it's one of the best ever. That's Bioshock. We're down to our number one. I've picked two games for number one because I see them as a duo. Can't pick between them. They're both incredible. My number one is a joint between Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal. From what I said about the original Doom being timeless, these have taken that aspect of that original game and given us it a thousand fold. These games are unbelievably good. They've taken, they've taken and were able to retain the spirit of the original Doom game and gave us a pretty much an update and evolution of those original Doom games. Uh, Doom 2016, what a reinvention of the Doom franchise. What a way to reintroduce it to the modern audience. It retains everything I love about the original 1993 Doom and then some. The glory kills are satisfying and never get old. The shooting is fast paced and brutal. And the Doom Slayer couldn't give a fuck about any of it. He just wants to kill demons. The lore as well in this is really interesting. They've really fleshed out the backstory of the Doomslayer and the demons and the, and the war between heaven and hell. Uh, we didn't really get much of a story in the original Doom. Uh, it was just, you're a marine, you're on Mars, kill demons. Pretty much the same thing for Doom 2016. It is that kind of basic game, but they've got a lot more story involved. Loads of lore, loads of backstory. It's awesome. I love Doom 2016. And equally, I love Doom, Et Doom Eternal as much. Again, they took what Doom 2016 did and they built upon it. Uh, it's more vertical this time around. Combat is more like a puzzle in this. So like, uh, oh, I need some more health. I'm going to glory kill a bastard. Do I need more ammo? I better get my chainsaw out and cut some demons to pieces to get ammo there's like a you know risk and reward in doom eternal when it concerns the combat it's pretty much the same as this but it's more vertical it's faster and it works more like a um a puzzle where you're managing what you need versus um who to kill next so to speak uh but when you when you are just jumping around zooming around just killing everyone it is the most satisfying thing ever it's awesome it brings in the super shotgun which is the greatest shotgun of all time in video games. It just is. And it has a meat hook on it. So it's even cooler. So now you can meat hook into somebody up top. Say someone's above you, like a caco demon. You can meat, meat hook them and zoom up to them and just shoot them with a super shotgun point blank and they explode. It's great. You literally are a Doom Slayer, but with a meat hook, you are literally Doom Slayer Spider-Man. Zipping around, meat hooking enemies everywhere. These games are absolutely exceptional must plays and for me they are the greatest first person shooters of all time that's doom 2016 and doom eternal rip and tear rip and tear so that's it guys those are my top 10 first person shooters of all time and some honorable mentions of course what are your favorite first person shooters are you even a fan of the genre let me know down below as always guys let's continue to build Games Collection.